Right, hello, I'm going to show you how to set up the Celestron C8. First job is to put the tripod out. And this leg needs to be facing north. The legs of the tripod are adjusted so that the bubble sits in the little ring on this spirit level here. Put one of these screws into this hole here. Just a couple of turns. So once we've got that one screw in place, we lift the tube up and put that one screw into this slot. That keeps the uh, telescope safe. Now we have two more of these screws which we fit in the holes on the bottom. If we take the weight of the tube they'll screw in easily. It's important that you don't force these. That's one. That's the second one. So the next thing to do is slacken this clamp hip which allows the optical tube assembly to rotate. You can now swing that round 180 degrees so that it's in line with the yoke. Right. Once that's done there's another clamp round this side which lets us turn, rotate the tube on its axis. Now the point of this process is to get this axis here pointing directly at the pole star which means then when it's motorised the telescope will track perfectly with the rotation of the earth. By looking through the finder scope here if we've got this leg pointing to north and this, uh, this bearing is set approximately correct we should be able to see Polaris through this finder scope here not during daylight of course <coughs> what we do then is rotate the tube and see if Polaris stays in the middle of the picture if it doesn't we have these screws here we slacken these three screws <coughs> then these two which work as push pull you have to slacken one to tighten the other this allow you to rotate the tube to point it exactly north so you don't have to get this leg spot on in a similar way there's another screw around here. If we slacken these clamps, the screw here allows us to adjust the angle of the, of the axis. This shouldn't really need adjusting. <coughs> if you've got this bubble set correctly and this leg pointing pretty much north, it's going to be more or less right. Um, for visual observing, that would be good enough. If you want to take time exposure photographs, then you're going to need to spend a little bit more time and care to get that exactly right. And once you've got it done, basically you, if you look through this eyepiece and swivel the scope, Polaris will stay very much in the middle. To actually do some observing, we're going to need a star diagonal and an eyepiece. This is a 15mm one. The eyepiece goes in there. And we remove the dust plug slacken this screw and the star diagonal will go in there. Now we can get a much closer view of, this, of Polaris and again repeat the check that it's staying in there, staying in the centre of the frame. To motorise the uh, scope so it tracks the stars, uh, DC supply is connected into this socket here. Uh, anything from 9 to 12 volts will do. The speed can then be adjusted by means of this knob here. 
so that shouldn't need adjusting. Manual control of the right ascension is provided by this knob. An adjustable scale is provided which can be zeroed for reference. Declination is controlled by slapping this knob and setting it to the required angle right off against the pointer here. Fine control is then by this knob here. The focus is adjusted by means of this knob here. Okay, packing up is very much the reverse. Loosen that screw. Put the dust plug back in. Put the IP somewhere safe. Loosen this clamp. Turn the optical tube. It will only turn one way because of this scope here. Lock it in the down position. Take out the bottom two screws. Loosen the top one. Lift the tube off and remove that screw. This will have to come out before the tube will go back into its uh, case. Put that away safely. And the trick with the tripod is to simply put your toe under this bit here and fold it up. That's it. Thank you.